Ooh, what a couple of weeks it's been. Since my last vlog two weeks ago, I've been crazy busy with some new and exciting things, this being the seventh video in 15 days. Yeah, don't get used to that. The first exciting thing was last Friday when I posted a video called How Many Followers Do You Have? If you haven't seen it yet, check the description. It's definitely worth your time. What was cool about it was it was sort of a new style of reflection for me, trying to focus on being as cinematic and crisp as I could be. It was also cool to have two of my brothers, Tito and Steve, helping me out, coming up with ideas as we went. The really smooth shot of the camera coming up from behind and panning back was actually Tito on his skateboard, holding the camera and filming in slow motion. Which, come on, was pretty amazing and is definitely one of the products of upgrading my equipment this year. Some of those shots would have been simply impossible on my old camera, and it got me really excited to think about what I can do and start dreaming up what I'll do next. For that reason, I want to take a moment to thank all those who have donated to Breaking in the Habit and make this ministry possible. But I especially want to thank St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Greenville, South Carolina. Not only did you help me find my vocation and have guided me along the way, you, through your major donation, have single-handedly bought this camera. You guys are amazing, and for that reason, if I may, I'd like to say this, you're the bomb.com. But really, as cool as that video was, it was just the start of the week. Two Catholicism in focuses and a vlog later, I found myself in a mystical and enchanting place I had never been before. Michigan. Did I say mystical and enchanting? I, I meant cold and rainy. I get those words mixed up sometimes. Invited by the Catholic Student Center of Michigan State University to speak at their fall retreat, I spent last weekend in a summer camp in the woods, sharing my faith, listening to their stories, and mostly just freaking out, realizing that I was a college freshman 10 years ago. It was a little unsettling. But I mean, come on, many of them didn't even know who Dave Matthews Band is. I can't be that old, can I? Don't answer. It was great though. I got to give two talks. What is the good news and what do we do with the good news? And it was so nice to break out of seminarian study mode and into teacher actually do something that matters mode. And if that wasn't enough, I got to watch the whole second season of Stranger Things Amazing. Had a quick visit from my mom. Dad was being lame and couldn't come. And you know this little thing called seminary and homework. No big deal. I just, I haven't slept much lately. It's cool. Which is funny because in the midst of all this, I got a question on Instagram that I get from time to time. Wow, brother Casey, how do you do it all and stay so balanced? Huh. Balanced. For me, it's funny that people think that because most of the time I feel like I'm just fighting to keep my head above water, letting important things slide or dropping the ball. I mean, I pray, I go to school and study, I make YouTube videos and give talks and do some ministry. And while yes, maybe two years ago this would have been overwhelming and I may not have been able to handle it, it pales in comparison to what some of my peers as working parents do. Going to work, taking care of kids, paying the bills, and trying to be sane on top of that. You want to know how extraordinary people do so much in a day and remain balanced? Ask them. But yeah, I understand why people ask me this question. And so, here's the best I got. Sometimes, it just takes a little discipline. What I found in my life, and what's true for most people, is not that there's no time. It's that we don't use our time effectively. Without a plan of things we wanna do or goals we wanna accomplish, those 20 to 30 minute blocks that we all have scattered throughout the week get wasted on cat videos and aimlessly flipping through our phones on Facebook when they could have been spent doing something productive. And don't get me wrong, I love me a good cat video. Hey. 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 So often we know what we want and we know how to do it. We just don't commit ourselves enough to not get distracted. What we lack is not time or ability. It's the discipline to just do it. It's the willpower when we're on a diet to just not eat the cookie. The focus when studying to just not call our friends or check Facebook. The commitment to just get out of bed on a cold morning and get to the gym. We know what we have to do. Sometimes we just have to do it. And really, this is great advice for our Christian lives as well. For many of us, what we're lacking most is just discipline. How many of us know what we want? We want to be good disciples of Jesus Christ. And how many of us know what that means? It means to show more love, to be humble, and to live moral lives for the sake of the kingdom. And yet, how often are we tempted with something we know we shouldn't do and give in really easily? I'm not talking about those times when we have a long battle and we fight it and it tears us up, but we eventually fall. I'm talking about those times when we're tempted and we don't even try to fight it. We just do it anyway and make up excuses afterwards. Oh, the spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. Ah, uh, it's just a small sin. Well, I'm usually a good person. I can let it slide just this one time. While, yes, I understand that there are always forces outside of my control, and I know that I'll never truly be perfect. But I wonder sometimes what my Christian life would be like 
if I applied the same discipline to virtue as I do to working out, to studies, and to making videos. As crazy and as impersonal as it sounds, sometimes, even with faith, we need to write down our goals, to set a schedule, and to stick to it like we would anything else. I am gonna pray at this time every day. I'm gonna give this much of my time, talent, and treasure to the church no matter what. And I am not gonna do X, Y, or Z because that's not who I am. Christian life, like anything else, takes work. We don't just wake up one day in a glorified state. While, yes, God continues to shower us with his love and mercy no matter what we do, it's ultimately up to us to do something with it. Are we going to continue to be distracted by all that life has to offer? Or are we going to have the discipline to accept it and to live it with all our hearts?